this week on Sylvia's Traders Lounge. The other side of that battle is the battle within you. You know, you have to be aligned to the style and method you do. Um, you have to be able to deal with uncertainty, complexity, volatility, um, failure, losses. You have to stay naturally disciplined to your system and your process. Um, you, you've constantly got to be questioning what you do and, and try to look at how can you do it better. Silver's Traders Lounge welcomes you all to yet another webinar where we learn trade and profit. We shall be giving you trading insights on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, risk management and trading psychology. Um, so we're truly honored again to have Steven Goldstein on our trading lounge. And the last time we spoke to him was like two years ago. Uh, January of 2021. So it's it's been a long time, but um, we're truly grateful to you, Stephen, for coming back on our trading lounge. Um, I think people can get more about your trading bio, how you started from our previous interview, but just like a brief uh, snapshot, you were once a trader for like 20 years, and then you transitioned into executive coaching and high performance coaching for traders. So that's how you have been in the industry. And, and he also is a founder of Alpha Mind podcast, which is currently ongoing. So Steven, um, maybe just as an introduction, you can tell us more about your trading journey, transitioning to executive coaching and, and where you're at now since the last time we spoke to you. Okay, okay. So I, I started trading many years ago, in the mid 1980s working for, um, I, I worked in banks in London on the, uh, on the trading desks on the uh, the FX and rates desks and bond desks at um, a Japanese bank in London. Um, in the early 90s, I migrated to um, the well, Credit Suisse, which, uh, as you know, is, uh, is, uh, has been in the news a lot this year, um, which was my first real experience at um, what I would say is a high profile um, investment bank slash big trading business where, you know, you're, you're required to be an aggressive trader. And I traded there again, the same markets, bonds, rates, FX. Um, I went through a couple of different roles. I was, you know, initially involved in some market making activities, some arbitrage activities, and then I migrated to becoming more of a proprietary trader, where you don't actually, you're not actually trading any customer flow. You're trading the capital they give you, um, and you're being proactive in how you take risk. I moved to the German bank, Commerce Bank, in the late nineties, and then in the early 2000s i moved to the bank and arm of american express uh, which wasn't a big investment bank obviously it's a huge global corporate um but they had a, a small banking business and um you know we were allowed to be you know just sort of trade the way we wanted in there so it was more of a propriety trading role um and it, you know it, it was kind of where i i, I traded that those were my best trading years I'd, I'd had coaching about 15 years into my career with um, with an executive coach, but it, it became more of a, a performance coaching um, um, series of sessions. And it was it was really about me, who I was, how I was. Um, it was kind of a, the start of a journey of self-discovery of myself as a trader, um, going inside into me rather than sort of searching for the answers out there in the markets and um, thinking that there's a, a better way to do it in the markets and that more analysis, more research, better systems, that that's going to open up a world of trading, but of better performance. But it was actually going into myself um, that was the turning point. And, and I became a far more successful trader, far more um, accepting of risk, far more capable of taking risk um, after that. And the next 10 years were by far my best 10 trading years. And then uh, a chance conversation with the same coach 10 years later kind of led to me going through a career change. I, I was looking to take it into, into the hedge fund world, what I was doing at that point. Um, but 
my, my coach suggested, you know, Steve, maybe you want to look at being a coach. There's a need for more coaches in the industry. Um, you know, do you know, do you really want to do another 20 years of uh, what is a very stressful and um, uh, it, it's a brilliant job, but it, it comes with an awful lot of um, uh, of wearing away at your uh, at your kind of you know your your, your sense of self, and um, it, it comes with a lot of anxiety and stress. And I, I decided that actually I was going to carry on training for myself and start learning how to be a coach, and then working with people as a coach. But actually, that side of it took over, and also I found that you know tra trading is something you're either totally into or you're not and um you know I, I i couldn't do it half half and half and i chose i chose what would be um i thought a more enjoyable quieter route All afterwards right. and um that that's where i went and i've been on a a journey of self discovery getting up close and personal with many amazing traders helping them make their own personal breakthroughs um from small retail traders right up to you know owners of, of giant hedge funds uh, and everything else in between across all markets all right so i think because we have a few traders who've joined on the call we'll take this as a coaching session from steven and so maybe you can tell us steven um because you started out as a trader what are some of the challenges that the people that you coach um experience that you relate to because you started out as a trader yourself yeah, well, the, the, you know, the, the, the big challenge is that the battle is within. It's always within. OK, you know, you're facing two battles. You've got one against the markets and one against yourself. And obviously you need to understand the markets. You need to have a strategy for how to succeed in the markets, how to find value, um, how to uh, understand markets, how to take risk, how to manage risk um how how to execute effectively um th those are kind of the the transactional aspects of trading they're the part that you can learn from other people you could learn from books you could learn from courses um not that it's easy <laughs> you know if it was easy you know everyone would be a millionaire um it, it, it's not i mean that that that's a lifelong journey for many people that goes through many different transitions. You know, if you learn to do anything that's incredibly skilled, it takes a long time. Um, but the, the other side of that battle is the battle within you. You know, you have to be aligned to the style and method you do. Um, you have to be able to deal with uncertainty, complexity, volatility, um, failure, losses. You have to stay naturally disciplined to your system and your process. Um, you've constantly got to be questioning what you do and, and try to look at how can you do it better. But more importantly, you've got to try and understand yourself. And that's the bit that most people don't. Most people don't really know who they are. They have an idealised version of who they are. They have an idealised version of how they're going to cope with problems and challenges. And they'll often try and do it like they think somebody else is doing it. But that person is totally different. We're all different. We're all unique. We all have our own. You know, we're, if you think about it, our fingerprint is as unique to us as, as anything else. Our DNA is completely unique to us. And our personality and our coping strategies and, you know, how we see things, how we um, make sense of things, how we identify things how we cope with things they're, they're all unique so you know trying to bring somebody else's system or method and make it your own is very difficult you, you have to kind of formulate your own way of doing things and then become comfortable with it all right all right that's where i, that's where I go as a that's where i go as a coach i don't coach people on how to work in markets or which method of analysis you use or which approach to trading you use that, that you know there's a myriad of approaches um and that, that doesn't really matter to me but it matters to me how they are when they're doing it and that's where the battle is all right cool understood and you're an author and uh, your book will be coming out soon uh mastering the mental game of trading so you can take us through your 
presentation and what people can expect from your book and then we can get to learn more from that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go through um, um, the whole process. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you very quickly through the, it's quite a complex presentation. So quite, it, it, it introduces a couple of the main models that are part of the book. Um, the, the book won't be out till January yet. It's still going through the editorial process. Um, and then it, it, it's got a lot of work to do around typesetting. And uh, I, I, I'm not an expert in putting a book together, the publishers in charge of that. <laughs> um, and they have a publishing timeline. Um, so it, it's not completed yet, but I'd say it's about 95% of the way there. Um, but I, I'll take you through the presentation, which captures some of the ideas which I've developed through my work as uh, a coach um, that, that's come from my experiences as a trader and is also part of the many thousands of hours of conversations I've had close up with some incredible traders, um, you know, from incredible small traders doing it at home on their own to incredible big traders working at some of the largest funds in the world. And, and to be honest, you know, and this might be reassuring for people, those guys, those guys at the top have the same challenges that the people at home have, believe it or not. They suffer the same self-doubts, the same insecurities, um, the same loss of form. The, you know, it's, it, it, they, they just have bigger money to play with. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm happy to take you into the presentation now if you're ready for me to go there. Yeah, you can share your screen and and then we can just dive right into it. Okay, so let me just get this into presentation format. Right. Um, okay, and let me hit screen share. Right, so you, you should see that coming through. Yeah. Can you see that clearly? Okay, so it's... The, the book is going to be called Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. Um, and, and the subtitle is going to be Harnessing the Power of the Inner Self to Fuel Trading Outperformance. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the, the themes of it, a little bit about myself, which I've kind of just touched upon there. So I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, some of the ideas in the book that, you know, trading is actually... It's not simple, but in theory, it's quite simple. It's incredibly complex in practice. You know, it's uh, that's the reality of it. And it's often us that, that adds to the complexity of it. Um, but a trading system or method or approach, you know, theoretically be learned in a few hours, depending on, on which system or approach you're using. Um, but it, it, it takes anywhere from many months to multiple years just to just to master that single approach. And, and then the problem is that that approach may not work for you. You may not be aligned to it. You may need something that's that's different. Um, it, there may be aspects of it you like, but again, you they don't work for you. Um, and there's a lot of different other aspects to it. It's not just the method or system you use. It's the analysis that may be part of it. It's the risk management, which gets a lot of people it's the allocation of, of capital. You know, a lot of people allocate too much capital. Some don't allocate enough capital. Um, and then there's a management of yourself as you're actually using or applying that system or method. Um, I like to use an analogy, a metaphor of tightrope walking. Um, it, it's relatively easy to learn, you know, um, unless you've got absolutely no sense of balance at all. And normally, if you were to decide, I'm going to learn to walk across a tightrope or, you know, maybe think of a, a bean like a four inch bean that, you know, a lot of people might have experienced when they were uh, a junior in school in their primary school days or younger school days. Um, you, you would have learned that maybe a foot or two, you know, 60 centimetres above the ground. And with time, you learn to do that relatively easily and soon you can walk that beam or that tightrope maybe even do a few tricks um pretty pretty simply you know pretty um basic now if you was to raise that same tightrope or beam to 200 feet it wouldn't be quite so easy 
And yet, the actual act of doing it, the technique, is exactly the same. The motor skills, the foot placement, the balance, your mind's coming to it. And that's completely changed that game. You might not even be able to climb the ladder up to 200 feet, let alone get on that beam. And even if you have a harness and a safety net, you know, you, your mind knows it's at risk. It doesn't just accept it and walk as if you did. So it completely disturbs the way you do things. So your mind at risk, at exposure, okay, changes. And your behaviours change. Your reactions change. How you view things change. How you react to things change. You're agitated. You're very aware of, of anything that, that throws you out. And you're not going to do that in the same way. It's just that simple. Okay. And we see that with all performance activities. You know, you could be a great singer, you could practice, but you suddenly walk out on the stage in front of thousands of people and it's going to be a different activity altogether as, as what you've been doing in practice. The same in sport, the same in acting. You know, great actors still talk after doing it for 50 years of getting butterflies every single time they go on stage. And trading is a performance activity. It's not an academic activity. It's not just something transactional. It's not just something you learn as if you were in an office, a regular office, um, just applying the same routine. It is a performance activity. So it's what's going on up here that is changing for you. So... You may know the steps, your fear, adrenaline, anxiety will disrupt your performance. It's not even a matter of whether they will or not, it will. And that's why trading and investing is both a mental game and a performance activity, completely. Even if no, even if you're doing it on your own, in your own room, your mind will act the same. It's not going to realise it's not practice here it's not play it's the real thing so simple in theory complex in practice it's it's psychological there's a couple of quotes here which i've used which try and kind of emphasize that um and, and whilst it's common and I, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning whilst it's common to think our problems are in the markets and we just need to know how to solve the market's problem most of us do. Most of our systems. That's why when we practice or people practice on a simulator, they tend to do well because it's like walking at two feet off the ground. Or when you have a period, you step away, you come back, you start making money again because you get back onto the right process. As you get more and more into it, you become part of it. So the challenges are not out there. The answers are not out there. They're always within us or within how we engage with what's out there. And that's that's something which I learned when I was coached 15 years into my career that started to change things. It was a big catalyst for my own personal change. So there's a few things which I, I, I look at in the book. Um, there's many themes, but you know, one of the is, is focusing on the process. Really get down to the process. Focus on that. And the odds of making money increase significantly. What we do is we tend to focus on the money. We tend to focus on the outcome. And that corrupts our process. It's like getting on the rope and, and worrying about getting to the end, not the journey across the rope, not what you should do. And it's the process that makes the money. When I meet great traders, they're great at process. That's what they do, okay? They don't focus on the money. I would say they don't. No one's immune to that. <laughs> I haven't yet met the person who doesn't get impacted by that. But the theory is focus on the process. The money will follow. So what I'm going to show you now is something I call a performance process cycle. Now, this is a tool which it becomes a framework for how you engage with your process, how you engage with the markets. It's something which I've developed over the years through my own experiences as a trader, through my own experiences as a coach. And 
also through some of my own learning in the field of psychotherapy. Um, I'm not a qualified psychotherapist, but as a coach, I've learned a lot of um, psychotherapeutical theories. I studied with psychotherapists and uh, uh, gaining some knowledge of some of the models that certain forms of psychotherapy use. I've just realized that that just captures this, this challenge of us versus ourselves and us versus our external environment, what we would call the inner game and the outer game. Um, and, and, and you can use this model to think of what you do when you're trading, the different steps you go through every time you make a single decision or put on a single trade or even run a whole portfolio of trades. Um, and what you're going through is you engage with risk and uncertainty. So this is the very base, the basic model. It's a basic framework. OK, I've termed it a performance process cycle. Captures the processes you go through when you're performing. OK, and by the way, this is relevant to anything you do. It's not just trading focused, but I'm going to talk about it just through the lens of trading. OK. Um, a few details about it. Inside the circle is you, yourself. That is just a place where you are, your core self, how you are, who you are, mind, body and soul, your mental state, your cognitive resources emotional aspects, your ego, um, everything that has helped you become who you are, okay, exists within the inside, inside that circle, okay? Outside the circle is everything external to you, okay? Your external world, the markets, the organisation, your family, your friends, your stakeholders, your teachers, your coaches. I am external to you at the moment. OK, every single one of you. So I am this point in time, I am part of your external world. And there is always information crossing that boundary. So there's a contact boundary where you and your external world meet. OK, that is that black circle, that line. OK, there is always information crossing that. There's always noise coming from the outside to you on the inside and from the inside to you that affects the outside world. Um, you can even think of markets. You know, every time a piece of news comes, it comes into tens of thousands of traders and they react to it in a certain way, which changes the market, depending on what their perception is. So that exchange of information across that line, that changes you and it changes your external world. It's a reflexive process, reflexive in nature. And that line, that black line, that's where your mental game is played, where those two worlds meet. OK. That is the mental game of trading, your ability to balance those two worlds together. To, to not let one disrupt the other or to understand how the other one is disrupting it and how to react appropriately. OK. And how to engage at the different stages of the cycle as you go around it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go into the process cycle as a cycle. Before we do, I, I want to bring up the topic of purpose because this is just so important, okay? Every single cycle, whether it's a millisecond cycle or a multiple cycle that's playing out over months or even years, has to have a purpose behind it. And you need to understand that purpose. And as you go through that cycle, it needs to honour that purpose. It needs to be true to it. OK, so you need to know what your purpose is. You need to understand how your purpose relates to what you do. It needs to be aligned to who you are and what you're doing. And then you need to know how you're going to achieve your purpose. What is the why? Your purpose is your why. Why am I doing this? Why am I trading? What am I trying to achieve? And how am I going to achieve it? OK, so if I start trading, if, if I look at the market, so I still, whilst I don't trade professionally, I have my little fun account, which I occasionally trade every now and then. Um, and I might look at it and I might, even before I do anything, before I take a trade, before I engage with the market, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to place risk. I'm trying to 
to make a return. I'm trying to make a profit. Um, why am I trying to do that? Well, I'm not trying to live off it anymore, but I used to try and live on it. Now I'm trying to just have a little bit of fun with it, still stay in touch with the market. I enjoy it. Um, you know, it keeps me engaged with trading in a way. And what is the way that I do it? Well, that's been formulated over, you know, three decades. Um, I, I, I put a certain amount of money to ri at risk. That is what I'm aware of. That is what I'm willing to lose on a trade or a trade idea. Then I, I know that I'll look at the market. I'll wait for perhaps a trade idea to manifest. I'll decide my particular style of trading, which is to think, well, what is the potential return on that trade? What is the risk reward? Is that something I'm willing to take? How, and, and then I know how much I'm going to commit to it. And then I'm going to know where my stop is going to be because it's it, it'll be based on probably a technical level or maybe a fundamental rationale. But I'll know a level where it's going to be. And that sets the position size for my trade because it's going to be related to how far my trade is from the entry and the potential stop. I may have a strategy if I think it's got a long term move ahead of it where I know I'm going to add more as it moves past a certain level. I know where I'm going to move the stop up to. I know how much extra I'm going to add. And, and that will allow me to build a larger trade. Um, and then I have a profit target and I'll keep moving the stop. And I know that my way is I'll never risk more than that certain amount to start with as the trade builds. That is my own trading style. OK, that is my way. Um, there are lots of different ways. I'm not going to say, you know, what your way is um, or anyone else's way. But I know before I start, that's what I'm going to do. I know my purpose. I know why I do it. I know the way I do it. Everyone must know that. If you don't know that, you're going to get into trouble. If you don't know your purpose, you're going to get into trouble. And by the way, goals have to come from purpose. If you just set a crazy goal with no relation to your purpose, your way, your resources, that goal becomes mostly unachievable. Simple example, someone who said to me, you know, Steve, I've got a $10,000 account. I'm looking to turn it into a million within two years. And I'm kind of laughing. I said, it's just not realistic. You know, it's not linked to how much money you're trading with, how much risk you're going to take. Um, it, so, so it was a pointless purpose. It was a goal set without a purpose. And then once we started exploring his purpose, how he trades, then he can start coming up with some realistic goals that were achievable. That was 15 years ago, by the way. I, I wasn't actually a coach at that time, but um, he's still trading 15 years later and he did very well. Um, so he aligned his purpose with, with how he is. So each process cycle must have a clear and explicit purpose behind it. Um, that purpose should fulfill some aspect of a person's job role function once you know your purpose, you set out how you plan to achieve it, your way. Um, and then what you need to do is stay present to that. You have to stay present to that purpose as you go around the cycle. OK, but I'm going to move into that in a minute. And the way you do that, that is your process. Okay, the way you do that, that forms your playbook or the various playbooks, which you may not physically have written down. Most people don't. But you know within your head how you plan to ta tackle the markets, how you plan to take risk, how you plan to view view markets. Everyone has a playbook or several playbooks. So I'm now going to introduce the zones of the cycle. Okay, Four zones, power zone one, or the first zone, the being zone. Just one second, I just want to make sure what I've got coming up next. Okay, so the first zone, quadrant one. Okay, it's called power zone one on here, being. So it starts at the reset at the six o'clock position and moves around to the trigger at the nine o'clock position. Um, before you start doing anything, OK, you have to immerse yourself in the market. So you start with your process. You start with your purpose. Before you start trading, you have to engage with the market. You have to immerse yourself in whatever you're doing. OK, you have to understand what's going on in the market. You have to understand you know, why you're there. That's part of the way and the why. Okay, you have to feel it, develop a feel for it. Okay, you watch the price action. You speak to other people. You read news, you read research. You build up your knowledge and your sense of what is going on out there. Okay, um, you don't just throw yourself into trading without getting this sense 
of being in the market and, and seeing what comes back. Because remember, there's information coming back all the time. And that informs you. And you start to feel and sense what is going on in the market, as well as just read about it. OK, and, and ideally, you do this with an open mind, a beginner's mindset. That's the ideal here. OK, you're not bringing any baggage. You're not bringing any biases. You're not bringing any old beliefs. You're not bringing your ego. OK, you have an open mind and you ask questions in the market. You, you act with curiosity, something I call detached curiosity. If you want to know what many of the best traders do without them realizing they do it, they exercise detached curiosity. OK, they don't just accept that they know what's happening. OK, they are quite happy not knowing. Okay, They hate being asked what's going on in the market. What do you think? I hate that because it, it really makes them having to start thinking they know what's going on. So go in with an open mind. And, and this this with the reason I call the being phase power zone one is this energizes you before you even start. OK, it gives you power. OK. So you haven't started trading yet. You're getting into the right mindset. You're building your mental capital ready for what's about to happen once you're in the market. OK, you now move to the second zone, production, call it the activity zone one, because this is the first part of the actual trade you're engaging in. You won't have to trade on yet. OK, but you're now... A trigger event happens. It could be a piece of news. It could be a piece of research you read. It could be just hearing somebody else say something that triggers you to think about something. Um, it could be a system trigger. You might be running a system. Um, it could be a, a technical analysis move, you know, a certain level breaks, a certain level holds maybe, um, depending what forms of analysis you're using. Or you just sit in there and you're feeling the sentiment and you're, OK, it's in that. OK, this isn't going any lower. You know, this has got some negative news, but it's not. It's struggling to sell off. You know, there's a lot of sell orders going into the market. There's a lot of selling and it's struggling to push down. So I think I think this could be a good buy area. So there's your narrative forming from all your interpretation of these triggers. OK, whether it's a systematic interpretation, whether it's, you know, it's got something more solid behind it in terms of being a fundamental analysis of a situation or whether it's based on some technical signal, or maybe all three of them. But you now have a narrative start to emerge, a story, an idea starts to emerge. And that is where the trade starts to happen. Then you move forward to the action point, the act. But you're not there yet. Before you act, you have to decide, am I going to take the trade? How am I going to take the trade? What size? What are my contingencies if it goes wrong? Where do I want it to get to? Am I just going to stay open with it or am I going to have a, a level, a target? Where do I get out if I'm wrong? What are the scenarios which get me out of it? What is the size I'm going to risk? All these different things. So you've now got the, the planning, the scenario planning for the trade. Um, a lot of people don't do that well. OK. Um, and of course, it depends how systematic you are. By the way, if you've got a systematic, a complete system where you're not involved with it, um, well, then I don't know why I'd be talking to you because you're not, you just let it run. But unless you've got a complete one, most people have a semi discretionary system. So as long as it's got semi discretion in it, it's got discretion in it. You see the signal, but it's up to you to take the trade and decide when to take it. You might leave it a second, you might leave it five seconds, you might leave it minutes or hours even. It all depends on you, but that is a decision. You're moving towards a decision that you're having to take. As you move towards that decision, the emotion starts to build up. You start to build this anxiety um, with it. I'm conscious that there's something saying we've got two minutes, three minutes left. Yeah, I'm going to send a new link um, in case the presentation takes longer so that we can read. Okay. Yeah. OK. Um, once you trade, you go over to the performance aspect. This is where the, 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 the bit about the tightrope being at 200 feet. This is where the emotions come into it. You've taken the trade. Um, even if you didn't take the trade, it's still a trade because you're still left with the impact of actually taking that trade. I didn't do it. So the performance is on, whether you took the trade or not, the process is still, still occurring. 
And in the performance zone, this is where you have to be optimal. This is where you have to be on your game. This is where you have to try and manage where you're engaging with this huge uncertainty. We call it radical uncertainty, where things are going to happen completely outside your control. Okay, the market moves are outside of your control. It's going to affect you. It's going to impact you. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to get anxious. You're going to want to lock profit in. You're going to want to maybe move your stops. You're going to want to, you know, even, you know, you might not have put the trade on because you feared losses or you you might have put it on without a trigger happen, without a full signal yet because you feared missing out. There is so much going on here. You may have put too much size on or not enough. You know, the, the list of things that could be happening here is endless. You know, you may get nervous or anxious once it's on and remove it. You may increase risk size as it goes on because it's working well, even though that wasn't part of your plan. You've now got too much on. There is so many things. Your mental capital gets eroded during this aspect, during this part. OK, and then you get to the outcome. The outcome is, well, it's, it's, did it work out the way I wanted? OK, did I make, not, not, not so much did I make money or lose money. OK, was this the outcome of the process that I wanted? OK, um, a lot of people mistake outcome for making money. Um, you know what, you can have a great process, but the market went against you. It's a random game. OK, but if you stuck to your process, that's still a good process. Um, OK, so you've got this activity zone, the, the performance zone, the, the, the upper quadrant between, say, midnight and, and three o'clock in the morning. And now you get to an outcome. You've had to manage yourself through that. And your mental capital was drained through that process. And you would have needed something called mental fortitude. Think of resilience to be able to stay on process. Throughout. And then we get to the final zone, the letting go zone. This is where the game is won, okay, more than any other zone. Okay? It's, it's a psychological zone. It's not part of the physical part of the trade, but we have to deal with the outcome. We have to get closure on what happened. We have to accept what happened, whether it's positive or negative, and we have to let go and return to balance in the face of what will be a lot of triggered e ego responses, um, a lot of heightened emotions, um, we may be disappointed with the outcome. We may be celebrating. We don't want whatever happened and the ego that goes with it to take over our process and, and throw us off process and take charge. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to move forward to looking at some of these aspects very quickly and why letting go is the key. Okay, so let me just bring something. I just want to show you that this this cycle can be seen as a wave as well which in this sense it gives you a chance to um see that it's got a continuation element to it it doesn't just end it starts the next cycle and you might have multiple cycles going on and i don't want to confuse you too much but you'll have small cycles that are fractal to much bigger cycles going on as well um and at that very bottom when you complete the cycle, you ground yourself, you reset, and you go back to your next cycle, hopefully balanced. The big problem is that if you don't ground yourself and you don't go through that reset, this is what happens. And this is where the damage starts to happen. Okay, you start spiraling. So, so what I'm showing here is the cycle overlaid by the emotional donut. Okay, as you move towards the action, the act of trading and the planning and preparation for putting a trade on your emotions start to become agitated okay you start to become much more sensitive to what's happening okay and that starts to drain your energy your resilience all those aspects you're much more likely to become engaged it's almost like you zoom in this is where you're now on the tightrope 200 feet in the air um and it's the reset which allows you to escape from that at the very bottom as you go through the letting go phase, you start to release those and let go and then stay on process. OK. OK. This is what happens if you don't let go. OK. You rush back and you short circuit the cycle and you miss out the reset. You miss out the trigger. You miss out the planning and preparation. 
and you start acting without thinking. Okay, you have a shortened process now. You rush straight back to act. Think of a time where you've just taken a trade, you've taken it off, you've made some money, and then you think, oh, I shouldn't have taken it off. And you just rush straight back in without thinking about what I'm going to do. And then usually you turn your profits into a loss. Okay. So what happens is once you start short-circuiting the cycle, you continue to short-circuit it. Okay? You're no longer on your own performance process cycle. You've now started your own suboptimal cycle. What happens is you do, you go through the performance without thinking, okay? And this new cycle starts to take shape. Once you start doing that, you start repeating that. And this feeds on itself and you start spiraling. And you start repeating it. And you barely leave that high emotion stage. You barely let go. Okay. You become controlled by the market. You become almost owned by the market or owned. And this is your ego doing this trading without thinking. Okay. And you become anxious. You become stressed. You're not on process anymore. If you look at this, okay. I should stay in there. Sorry, let me move back to there. When you're spiraling, you're not in that section one. So talk about the being phase. You're no longer going through that. You're no longer immersing yourself in the market without ego, without bias. You're no longer curious. You're no longer immersing yourself, asking questions, getting the feedback from the market. You're no longer going through an active production process for each trade. You're just reacting to whatever the market is doing. That's where subpar performance becomes baked in. And this is what I call the, the trader's death spiral. And you can see it on the wave format, what happens here. If you stay on process, and do the full waves, your performance potential is high. You can see that at the bottom here. Once you stop resetting, okay, your performance potential declines. You may still be making money. You may not be losing money yet, but you're creating the conditions for you to start losing money. OK, your actions become increasingly owned by the market. Your ability to be objective fades away. You're not resetting and you become owned. That's what this looks like. Think of losing the plot. It's another way of talking about it. The only way you exit that spiral is to let go, is to engage with the letting go process. This is why this is the key, okay? The ability to let go. And when I work with people, I've noticed the masters, the super traders, they are so much better at this than everyone else. I'm not going to say they're perfect because no one is perfect, okay? And I'm not going to say they have their moments where they lose it, where they go on tilt or they lose the plot. No one is immune to that. We're all human, Okay. But they do it better than everyone else. And this is why letting go is the super skill of great trading. Okay. You're right. Letting go, you're able to get back to that first power zone and get back on process and, and engage with it. Now, there is more to this presentation, but I would just be, I just wouldn't have time um, to go into it. But that, that's the title, that's the cover of the book, by the way, when it comes out. Um, which is, is another eight months away um but they've, they've done the cover already so but i'm happy if you've i don't know how long you've got if you want to just maybe give five or a few questions in the five minutes maybe yeah um so thank you for taking us through that in-depth presentation and also like an overview of what we should expect in your new book um and then also you will let us know when the book is out so we can be able to purchase it via Amazon or, or any other site that it shall be published. Um, meanwhile, I think Kish had a question. Um, so we are opening this session for Q&A. Um, also, my takeaway is that uh, from all that presentation is that um, trading is a performance activity and when we let things in our minds, that's what really affects our, our performance. Anxiety and adrenaline disrupts the performance and in as much as every you have the skill set. So thank you so much, Stephen. Um, that's so, okay. Yeah. So Kish, maybe you can unmute yourself and uh, 
I thought you had typed in a question yeah. in the first session, then we can open the session for Q&A. I saw a question about journaling, so I, I never answered it at the time, but he did mention, um, I didn't say the full question, I just saw the word journaling on there. Um, journaling, okay, let me, ju I said, go ahead. Okay, the question was, do you use journal to structure your thinking? And if not, what is your assessment, self-assessment plan? Right. <laughs> So yeah, um, well, the, the idea behind the tool is to give you a structured approach, a framework for engaging with the market. Um, in terms of your thinking, I'm, I'm not quite, did you say, how, how do you structure your thinking? Could, could you just repeat the, the first part of the question? I think she, um, do you use, Do you use journal? Do you use a journal to structure your thinking? Oh, do I use not? a journal? Yeah. Um, I used to use a journal. I don't know if you can see them all behind me, but there's a whole series of ring binders that I used to use when I traded. Um, and they were part of structuring my thinking and my thoughts on the market. But they, they were more important as a, a way of reflecting on my process and what I was doing and how I was engaging with the market that, that that was more important to me um you, you can find out a lot about yourself if you keep a journal the important thing is to review it in the future and go back on it and see what patterns you're you're learning what what patterns about yourself are revealing themselves in the notes you've made about yourself in the journal and i use a particular format called a 331 format where you ask three questions of yourself every day or every week if you don't want to do it every day um it, it's what three things did i do well and you spend no more than one sentence answering each one of them because you don't want a journal to be something which becomes um boring to the point where you don't do it um what three things could i have done better which is really what three things did i do poorly but i deliberately like to phrase them in a positive way because we have a a natural negative bias and you need to counter that somewhat to be more objective and then what one thing do i need to change about myself or my trading or my process going forward and it's that one question which gets you to think not just what did i do but what do i need to change and if you do that periodically and regularly even your answers to those questions start to reveal something when you go through them all and you start to realize Okay, this is something I really need to address. And the reason I say one thing is because it's very hard to work on real change for lots of different things at once. We need to find one thing, and usually there's many different elements to that one thing. But as we go through that, it starts to reveal a lot about ourselves when we look back over it. So, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of journaling. I think everyone should do it. Not everyone does, and some people, it doesn't work for them. You know that they've got it in their head um that's perfectly fine if you're, you're one of those people but i do find that they help they're really useful all right um i don't see any other questions so thank you so much steven uh this was like more of a coaching session which we haven't done in a very long time um so this will really uh propel us in our trading moving forward and in all the sessions that we'll be having in the near future we're really truly grateful we'll also have it um on our subscribers over 1k this so this is like a pre-recorded session once it's up on our youtube channel we'll share that with you as well so you can also uh, put it up on your podcast um if you feel like uh, it's something that you would want also your followers to also go through um so thank you so much uh and we we'd love to have you again in the future um Really I'd be delighted, I'd be delighted to come back. Yeah, so for now we'll let you go and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, bye.